Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well we've got another hover effect for you today. We've got an image over here. If I hover over it, you're going to see a button pop up and it's going to fade out the image a little bit in the background and the buttons are going to take us to a new URL. Let's just close that down. And I've done the same here. The way we're doing it today with a bit of coding, it'll let you do a light box as well by clicking on it it'll open the light box uh, we've got to do a bit of coding for this today but don't let that put you off it's really easy any code I write I'll put down below the video as usual so let's get started I'm going to enable the visual builder and let's go down and I'll add a new row little green button for the row I'm going to add three columns because that's what I've got before obviously you put in what you need I'm going to use a little Divi image module for this. Divi comes as standard with all these modules. If you're using WooCommerce, it'll give you an extra dozen also. Here's the image module. So I'm going to pop one of those in. Select the image that I want. Now we've actually done this before using a reg regular call to action module for the button and put an image in the background. The reason I'm doing it this way with a bit of code today it'll allow you to pop it out into a light box and add links and what have you so here's our little image right here if we go down we can decide if we want to open it in a light box flip that to on if not put your URL where you want the button to take people when we created the button best practice as always if you're linking to your own site leave it in the same window if you're linking to somebody else's site Open it in a new tab so your site stays open. I'm going to use Lightbox on this. Now we actually need to add our button. And like I say, we're doing a bit of coding for this today, but don't let that put you off. It'll all be below the video for anybody that wants to just copy and paste. But if you want to follow along, I'm going to do it in real time for you. OK, so I've gone over to the advanced, to the custom CSS. I'm in the before box, pseudo element. So this will play something before our actual image there so let's get started we've got to tell it what we want to put in there so I'm going to say content colon then open some single inverted commas and inside we can put what we want our button to say so I'm just going to say click me okay after we've got our content in there what you want your button to say let's put a semicolon so we can add another line of code I'm going to give it a color I don't know if you can see that up there but the click me is right on the top of that image right there so I'm going to give it a, a color, white. White is FFF in hex. It's disappeared into our white background, but that's fine. I'm going to drag it down into the middle of our image in a second. Now it looked like it was behind our image. So I'm going to pull it to the front in a minute using a Z index, but I'm going to position it first, give it some absolute position and pull it down to around the middle here. So I'm going to say position on absolute then where do we want it to be halfway down the image so I'm going to say top colon 50% and halfway across the image then I'm going to say left 50% now we can't see it so let's bring it forward by using some Z index Z index is used to put elements on top of each other low numbers will be below an element higher numbers will appear on top of numbers with lower elements so I'm going to give it a Z index I'll try 50 and see what happens with that we may need to up it no nope, that worked fine as you can see it's popped up right there and it's kind of in the middle the top left corner is actually in the middle so we need to adjust it slightly to make sure it's going to be dead central for us and to do that we'll use some transform translate so let's put a semicolon there transform colon translate and open some round brackets there. Make sure you don't put a gap between translate and the brackets. And in between, we're going to offset it by doing negative 50% or minus 50%, comma, and the same thing, negative 50%. And it's told me I've spelt transform wrong there. With CSS, if you spell it wrong, it's not going to work. There we go. And that's popped it in the middle, transform, translate. Okay. Semicolon. Okay, what else do we want to do? Well, we kind of want to turn it into a button. So to do that, we can affect the font size and the background color. So let's make the font size a bit bigger. Font. 
size. Well, maybe about 20 picks, maybe that might be too much. That's okay. And we'll give it a background. Now you can give it whatever color you want. I'll just say blue. Put in whatever hex color you need. And let's give it some padding all around. I'm going to make it 20 picks, top and bottom. And 30 picks left and right. Now you can see that color in the background there. There we go. That looks pretty much like a button to me. That writing might be a little big. I'm going to take that down to say 16 picks. There we go. I like that better. Okay. And to sort of complete the effect, what we want to do is fade that image out in the background a bit when we hover on it. So I'll do the hover effect in a minute, but we'll add the fade to the button because we're not going to see this button until we actually hover over it. So I'm going to do that with a bit of box shadow. And I'm going to give it zero picks up and down, zero picks left and right. I'm going to give it a spread of about 10 picks. And I'm going to make it size wise. I'm going to make it about 250 pixels, which will spread out behind it. So let's try 250 picks. And as you can see, that's covered our whole image and made the image invisible. Now mine's defaulted to white. You can obviously put in whatever color you want here. Let's put in a black, for instance, zero, zero, zero. And as you can see, it's all spilling right out of this box here, covering stuff. So to stop it spilling out, we're going to use this size, but to stop it spilling out, still on the advanced tab, I'm going to close up the custom CSS. I'm going to go down to visibility, horizontal and vertical overflow. I'm going to turn both of those to off or hidden. There we go. So we've got the shape. We know our image is behind there. So let's go back to our CSS and adjust that color so we can see through it. There's the color. Now hex, the real black color is six zeros. So we need to add the other three. CSS three only makes you put in three if there's six of the same. But I'm going to add two numbers on the end. I'm going to say 50 and it can go from zero zero to 99 to change the opacity. And as you can see, it's darkened out that background there. So we can actually see through it. It's just darkened it out. If I remove this line of code, you can see the difference there. And you can adjust your opacity if you want it darker. Take that number down a bit. As you see, if you want it to be more of a solid black color, take the number up. And it'll darken it right down like that. Okay, I'm actually going to use white on this to make it more faded. So I'm going to swap those zeros for Fs because white's six Fs. And that sort of gives it that washed out appearance, which is great. But like I say, we only want to see this button here when we hover over it. And now we've got a link when I do this, but if I go on the button, there's no link. You see that hand icon changing from a hand icon to an X. To make sure we can click on the actual button itself, I'm going to put a colon. I'm going to say pointer events dash events none semicolon. Now when I hover over it, we've got our hand to be able to cl click the button. Okay, well, this is great, but I only want to see this, like I say, on hover. So I'm going to drop down one more, and I'm simply going to write opacity or see throughness, if you like. Zero. That will make it invisible. Boom. Can't see it. We can just see the image. And then this is common to most Divi modules. If you hover over the dark writing here, you'll see some icons appear. Hover over the element you're working on. And if there's an arrow there, we can set a hover state desktop when your mouse is not on it. Hover, obviously, when your mouse is on it. So when we are hovering on it, I want to bring it back. So I'm going to say opacity. One. One being fully visible. Zero being invisible. And you can incre increment up in decimals 
1.2, 1.4, 2.5, etc. for different transparencies. Okay, well, the default time it takes to get from here to here when you're coding with Tivi is pretty instant. So I'm going to slow mine down to about three quarters of a second with some transition duration, and we should be done. So I'm going to say transition duration. And I'm going to say 0.7s for seconds. And that'll make it a nice little gradual ease between the two there. OK, so we've got that done. And this should all work nicely. Let's just save this. And let's duplicate this module. We hit the little two little buttons there, duplicate it. I'm going to go into this one. I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the image. And I'm going to change the link from open in light box to a regular link. Let's grab a link. I've got a playlist up here. And we'll paste that in there. We're going off site, so I'm going to put it in new tab. And let's change what our text says. So back into our advanced CSS, custom CSS right here. I'm going to say watch video or new video, let's say that. Now I'm going to save. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And check out our site. OK, roll on down. There's our first one. Nothing there. When we hover over it, we've got our Click Me. And this will pop it out into a light box because we use the light box effect on this one. And for the one next door, same thing. New video. I want to click on this. It'll take me to a new page. When Johnny and said there we go. Awesome new so there you go, guys. There's how to add a button over an image using the Divi theme. So you can still use the light box effect or add a link if you want to. I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. If you have, Please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.